This little beauty, the Jigger, is one of the best fish catchers around, especially when it comes to F1 fishing. However, I'm going to show you a little twist that will make this even better. So stay tuned to find out more. Okay, so in the intro I teased about using the jigger but in a slightly unconventional way. We all know how effective it is for fishing for F1s when you're jigging up and down in deeper water, a brilliant, brilliant tactic. However, this little twist that I've been doing, it set the venue record on this lake and I've had numerous like big weights on this lake and other lakes. It's a deadly method. It's all about fishing paced shallow. Now, you might be thinking paced shallow, impossible. Well, there's loads of videos on YouTube about paced shallow, but it's one of the methods that is an absolute match winner. Now, we've all got methods, pellets, casters, maggots, and they're great, they work really well shallow. But paste, when it gets going, especially fishing shallow, is a proper match winning method, and sometimes you can have it to yourself because no one really wants the hassle of doing it. So I'm gonna show you a few little ways how you can make it more effective for yourself. Now, let's look at the rig first because that is the most important part. The float, just so happens to be a jigger really, but it's the fact that it doesn't tangle that I like. So you could use a dibber, you could use a tinks, you could use whatever, as long as it supported that paste, no problem. However, the jigger supports the paste and because it slides on the line in between two stops, never tangles. So when I load my pot up and I leave it there and I ship it out, it just never tangles up. I have a little bead, probably two inches below the pole tip, which allows me to fish at a set depth. The fish come very, very shallow here, and a lot of venues, when you throw in slop in, they come right up in the water. So I need to be able to fish there. The rules at this venue say that six inches is the shallowest you can fish, which isn't a problem, it's about right. We'll talk a little bit more in a little bit about how we can control the depth we're catching the fish at. But that little rig is deadly, trust me. So let me just talk you through it. I've got a size 12 B911 eyed on. Now you may be thinking, why has he got an eyed hook on? Well, I could be catching 200 fish on this particular lake. And spade end hooks are great, but eventually you'll have all had it where the knot eventually turns around and the line comes off the back of the spade. Not a problem, but you do start missing bites like that. I tie an eyed hook on like I would a knotless knot and then trim, the, say, the band off. And the hook is always cocked in the right position. So when I'm catching loads of fish, I don't want to change my hook all the time. Um, I think that's a big part of it. That's tied up on 014, so nice and durable you could probably use 016 to be honest is enough fish feeding and then down at the business end we've got it's just a three inch hook length and then we've got one number 10 just to help cock the float that's all don't forget we've got uh, a little blob of paste on there so it's going to cock the float a bit so we can't have too much shot on because you're not allowed to over shot the float um, and then we've got that little bead just a little rubber bead which like i say that is like finding the depth where i'm where i'm going to catch these fish so <clears throat> all in all the rig's about eight or nine inches long, that's all. Very, very short, and this is the reason why we've got to have that jigger on, because if I was to use a dibber or whatever, I'd be forever in tangles, it'd be wrapping round, whereas with this, I load my pot up, it's in there, and no matter where I ship it out, it's just tangle free. So let's have a look at the bait, because that's the next important factor. It's quite simple, but there's a few key factors to it, so let's have a look at that now. Now for this method, the pace shallow method, the bait is really important. Now, you could feed pellets, you could feed other stuff, but sloppy ground bait is the number one by far, and it goes hand in hand with what we're trying to do. Now, there's loads of grommets on the market you could use. You just want something that's nice and light, so something crushed expander based. I've used F1 today, it could be super crushed expander, it could be like the krill one. Anything that's quite light and airy is what you want. Basically, you want to be able to throw it, but also it explodes on the surface, and you'll see, I actually pot a lot of it in rather than throw it and I, I actually sort of slap it on the surface and it creates a big cloud. That's exactly what you want. I've toyed with the idea of putting dyes in it. I've done matches on here and used red ground bait and it's been great. But I've sort of tweaked that a little bit and actually I prefer more of a brown natural coloured to be honest now. The reason is my hook bait which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, you just want something that 
holes together so you can throw it to six meters and it just explodes on the surface. And you'll notice I've got a, a big bowl here on my side tray. I've got my, my little bowl of water there, which is really important. And in the corner of this big bowl, I've got my, my throwing mix at the back, if that makes sense. And then at the front, in this little front corner, I'm constantly wetting this little bit up. And this is really runny. And it's the stuff that I'm gonna pot in. It allows me to throw my bait in from this stuff at the back. But as soon as I'm actually fishing, you'll be able to see in all the clips and when I start fishing, I actually use this really runny stuff in the pot to bring the fish right up. So by having this nice big working area, I can alter the, the same mix in this bowl. So it's really effective. So the paste is just as important as a ground bait and it's, it's simple. The, the key things you want is something, a really fine ground bait or a crushed pellet. Don't use crushed expander though, I must stress that. Expander just opens up way too quick and the fish you'll see from the footage, they're quite aggressive. Once you get them going on this, they come really shallow, they can bash your bait off really quickly. So that a crushed expander just wouldn't be on the hook long enough to, to actually do the damage. So I actually use Thatcher's, which is more of a fish meal based ground bait, like a, a proper fish meal, and it's fine. You can run it through a flour sieve, that is, the, that is perfect. Run it through a flour sieve, mix it up to a, it's like a soft putty, I'm gonna say. Now you may think, well, that's not Thatcher's. Well, it is, and all I've just done is drizzled in some of the krill and squid haze. The only reason is, I mentioned earlier about, uh, I used to use red ground bait. Now, red ground, it's great, the fish love it. But the problem is, is getting your hook bait to then stand out. So what I've been doing this season is using a, a pale ground bait and then using a red paste over the top and it's been working brilliant. And I'm, I'm convinced, a bit like a red pellet's really good, the red paste stands out a mile. So. Very simple, like I say, it's a, it's a decent putty texture. We've got the, the ground bait there mixed to a slop so I can throw it if I need to, but then I've got my wet stuff at the front allowing me to pot it in nice and accurately too. Okay, so that's the bait sorted. That's the rig shown. Let's get on with catching a few fish. Now, the first thing I will say is, you've got to build this method up. Now, I've been fishing for a few hours now and the fish are gagging for it. If I throw some bait in, I can see the fish. They're absolutely loving it. They're just in and amongst that ground bait. They're loving life. However, it wasn't like that at the start and it's, it's taken, I've been fishing a good few hours now and it's taken a while to get them to this point. And that's one thing I will say is, don't expect to do this from the start and just catch loads of fish. Give it half an hour to an hour, feeding that slot regularly, and it'll just build and build and build. And then as the session goes on, it'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. And as the competition goes, the fish drag other fish into your swim, and you'll just have it away. It's one of those methods, when it works, it's almost unbeatable. So, a bit of housekeeping about the setup. Obviously, nothing complicated. I've got my bowl at the front here, where I've got my wet slop at the front, like I mentioned. I've got my throwing slop at the back. Importantly, I've got a bowl of water here, just a, positioned on the front leg, so I can constantly keep a wet hand and keep my hand clean. The last thing you want to be doing is getting yourself clattered up with ground bait. So I'm constantly dipping in there, have to see my hands clean. It also helps when you're uh, throwing the paste, the throwing the slop in, so there we go. Throw it in, nice and simple. So let's get some fish caught. It's, I mean, it's not gonna take very long because they're absolutely gagging for it. Like I said, I've done the hard work, I've fed the swim up. I think we need to talk about the actual top kit though. I started using these about 10 years ago. And as you can see, this is a standard F1 short kit, which is 1.8 meters. And my short kit is a good two, probably two and a half foot shorter. And it's nothing fancy. All it is, is the number two off a Preston top kit. Uh, quite lucky because it comes with a centralizing bush anyway. So I just use that as my bush. And the reason is, you'll see from when I'm fishing. Last thing you want when you pace shallow fishing is constantly unshipping because you'll knock the bait out of your pot. It just becomes a nightmare, the whole process, because you, you will miss bites with this method, there's no way around it. But it's all about minimizing that and making everything nice and smooth. So I have this and it's a reduced length of elastic. The elastic still comes out lovely. I've got the white zip in. 
So that's not a problem. It's all about reducing the amount of elastic so I don't have to break down. So when I get fishing in a minute, you'll see, I can just net the fish, either one pull on the puller, never break down. And I've had matches on here where I fish for four hours shallow and never had to break down. That's how good it is. So as you see, I've got the little rig. I think we'll talk about the process. So first thing, as I said, I've built my swim up by throwing bait in. Obviously this is venue dependent. Here you're allowed to do it. Um, but just check your rules before you go lashing in loads of ground bait. As you can see, they're absolutely ravenous. <laughs> but the whole process is this. I'm fishing eight inches deep, but I'll happily go move that down to six inches, depending on how the fishing's going. The shallower, the better looking at this. One thing I will say about the slop is it needs to be a certain texture. If you get really wet slop, a bit of what's happening now will happen to you. So just a tiny little pea sort of size bit of paste you notice i've got the red paste on and then wet my hand and then what i'm going to do is load my pot up on so i've put that nice bit of slop on top of the paste paste is in the bottom slop on the top and i'm going to go out and, and slap it on the surface and while i'm doing it i'm going to explain about the different so there you go that's how quick <laughs> that's how quick it can be obviously i've, I've I've been fishing for a while, so the fishing's really good, but that's not been unusual today to get a bite as quick as that. And that is why I pace shallow is so deadly, because when they're in amongst that slot feeding dead shallow, they just nail it without caution. That's actually a carp. So look, I'm not, not breaking down. I've just got my puller here. So if I do hook a carp, I can still net the fish, no problem. And it's all about making things as smooth as possible. Looks like I'm not going that fast today, but Obviously I am because the weights and the, the fish count is just unbelievable. So I just pull them in. There you go. Nice little. They're bonus fish they are. Obviously your bread and butter are the uh, the F1s, but if a few carp come along, even better. Now you notice I'm not gonna throw any bait in. The reason is the, the fish are there. They're waiting for my pace to come in. They're waiting for my pot. So there's no need, but if I was in a match, I'd be throwing it and monitoring what the situation was. I've had matches on here where you catch really well for two or three hours and then the fish come really high and you can't catch them anymore because they're knocking your bait off. So get that slop in there and it's all about the texture of the slop that's the important part. So let's just whiz him out. You see, I'll just tap it on the surface and that, as quick as that. And it's not, it's easy to probably say well, you pleasure fishing, of course it's like this, but uh, trust me, and the matches here, it's exactly the same. And I've had it at other venues as well. And this is probably showing that you don't actually need to be able to throw the bait in to make it work, because as you can see, I'm not throwing the bait in. So a nice, proper F1. You do catch some big F1s on it as well. So, we're just working it. And one thing, one of the biggest things with slop fishing is managing the depth at where the fish are because if i just went loopy which is very tempting to do and just start throwing all this wet stuff in constantly the fish will come really shallow and you can't catch them they knock the bait off before they before they actually um you actually catch one when that happens you need to put a stiffer paste a stiffer slop in your pot and just bring them down a little bit you, you want them like that deep not that deep because you can't when they're super shallow you can't catch them so it's a really simple method I mean, look at that. You cannot catch faster than that shallow. Like, it's, it's taking me a second to get a bite there. And because I've not, I'm not having to break down, it's fishing in there in, in seconds. I'll just come off in the net, but lovely stamp F1. It is literally taking me seconds to, to catch them. And when, you know, F1's on the cards, on venues where you can feed ground bait, it is just so effective this is. So I'm putting ever so slightly stiffer paste there, slopping my pot to try and control where the fish are. There's a big mirror in the peg actually at the minute. There you go, as quick as that. I'm purposely not throwing any bait in because I know that that'll just get them too excited, which sounds ridiculous, but it is the case. There's a lot of fish here today. Look at that, as quick as that. Nice. I mean, they're getting on for a pound a go then, which last year I was catching 230 to 250 fish for 200 plus. 
this year I get, get the impression the weights could be a bit bigger. So I'm just putting that red paste on, just a nice little blob. Whether that red paste makes a difference, I'm not sure, but in my head it just helps it stand out on the surface. See that one, they've come really high because I've made the mistake there of, look at that, that's ridiculous. I've made the mistake there of putting my, bait, my, bait, my slop into too sloppy, which has brought the fish up too high. So I'm gonna solve that by going a bit further back in my bowl. And this is why having a big bowl like this is perfect. That's a little bit stiffer, which will hopefully <coughs> keep them down a bit, make them a bit easier to catch. But this is a totally different way of fishing. There you go. This is a totally different way of using the jigger, but it, for this pace shallow, it's just perfect float for it. And um, I think just demonstrates how effective it can be. So there's so many different types of floats you could use for this. But that jigger, since I started using that, has transformed how I do it. I used to use a little dibber, something like a big head would be ideal. But, you know, you're getting tangles, you're using a slightly longer line. Whereas this allows me to fish super short lines. It never tangles because obviously it finds its own place in the middle of your rig. So when you ship it out, even if it twists over, it's not going to tangle. And it just makes the whole process so easy. And then when you're actually in the swim, it works well as well because it's so so short and inconspicuous. It, you're just never going to have any problems. Okay, this has actually got silly now. I should have done it earlier when there were less fish feeding. Lovely big F1s as well. For this lake, anyway, that's a real good stamp of F1, that is. If you catch, catch one of them every uh, couple of minutes, you're going to be on for a serious weight. Size 12 up. Like I said, it, I use that eyed one just because, just for longevity really, it helps keep my uh, hook tied in the right position at all times. Just catch a couple more just to show you. Yeah, as quick as that. So I've had three or four goes there with feeding that stiff of slop and it's definitely kept them a bit more in control. See that short top kit is the stub. He's just making the whole process so efficient. Not, it's not about bullying them or anything. It's all about making the most of the time and making it smooth. So I'll just try and catch you another piece of the red there. Try and catch you one more, one or two more. Two more. The reality was I waited a few seconds there, but felt like I was waiting forever. Everything about the setup's dead right, everything's to hand. It's got a nice little short landing, just one section of landing net. Which makes moving it around dead easy and quick. Nice little hair net so that fish are just there where I need them when I'm unhooking them. Pop them, pop them back, just sort of rested there, nice and to hand. Everything's just dead right. I've got my roller set quite high behind me so that it allows me to pivot the top kit up. If it was if it was too low, it would get difficult, whereas I've got that pivot point to allow me to raise the tip dead easy. It's all, um, it's a simple approach. It's all been thought out why I do everything the way we do it. This is that, just... I've tried them all, the methods, the pellet, shallow, lasso pellet, but nothing's better than this. Not when it gets going like this. Nothing's better than this. Just, just so quick and efficient, look. Proper F1s. And the funny thing is, if you were to put a pellet on, you might think, well, why not just put a pellet on? But because they're feeding on slop, they're an absolute nightmare to catch on pellets. They're just, they're obviously gill feeding and that's what they're feeding on that slop. So a pellet is quite unusual, whereas a nice big soft bit of paste is just taken in without caution. Look at that. That's ridiculous. They're trying to make me float now. <laughs> so 
no, this is it, one more. So I'll just show you the process once more. Um, the pot I've got on is just the large Preston one. Because the top kit is so thick, you can't use like a normal pot. So I had to cut a hole in the side and just jam it on. You can make it out of an aerosol lid, something like that. But that works quite nice. The holes around the side actually help the bait and the slop come out. So just something to bear in mind. It's nice and close to the tip. Makes the whole thing very much easier. Wet hand, out we go. Most of the fish up the cells. If you were to use a longer line, you'd have to strike, which can become a nightmare. Let them up the cells, you'd be much better off. There you go. So that'll do. You just see me catch three or four fish in not very long. And it just shows you how deadly this approach is, and a different way of using the old jigger. Nice F1. They're just absolutely perfect for this. There we go. Lovely F1. Getting on for two pound, I reckon. Lovely fish. Perfect way to end. So next time someone mentions about Pace Shallow, don't scoff at it. Give it a go. It is very simple, but there's a few things that you need to get right, and hopefully the bits that I've showed you today will help you catch loads of fish on this absolutely deadly method.